Hey guys, it's Brett here with the Tuning School. In this Tech Tuesday, we're going to be learning about how to tell if your wideband sensor for your dyno is bad. Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to use your scan to tell if the tune is what's causing your richer lean condition or if a bad wideband O2 sensor is what's causing your richer lean condition. This is something that we've experienced here ourselves on our dyno many times and usually if you don't know what to look for it could waste one, two, maybe even three hours on the dyno. So today we're going to try and help you save some time. So here we are on our Mustang dyno. We have a pull up from our 1998 Pontiac Trans Am with their rear mounted STS turbo kit. We are running a Daytona Sensors Go 4 dual channel wideband through our dyno. You can see during our pull everything looks really clean. The boost came up nice. It came up to 7 pounds right here. The, art, the torque and the horsepower are great. They look really awesome. You see the AFR looks like it's holding good for most of the run. We're at like 11.7, 11.5, 11.6, .5, but you notice at like 5200 RPM the AFR just completely crashes to 9.8 all the way down into the very bottom. Now that can be a little bit alarming when you're doing a pull because it's quite scary to see all of a sudden you were just fine with your AFR, everything was going great, and then you crashed to 9.8. So clearly there's a problem here of some kind, but you probably aren't sure what yet. A good way to tell if this is actually a tune related problem or if it's uh, a simply a wideband sensor problem is if the tune was actually commanding that much fuel and it was actually crashing to that AFR level, you should probably see a decrease in the horsepower and tor torque curve. You see here that they follow on the same exact trend that they were before. So that's a good indicator that there's not actually a problem here, that it's just the sensor itself. So here we have the same exact scan of that dyno pool that we just viewed. So this is the HP tuner scan of the car. Uh, and this right here, you can see that we have our wideband hooked up to our HP tuners pro unit. What this is going to tell us is that there's a variation between what we saw on the dyno and what we see in the scan. Like Sometimes if you, if you lose a signal wire or something like that on the dyno, you're going to get a different reading from the dyno than you will the scanner. As you can see here though, at cruising it's 14.7, we enter wide open throttle it's 11.5, and we still have that rich point at 5200 RPM. So now that we know that there's not a difference between the two of them, there's a few things that we can check to see if it's the tune or if it's the uh, O2 sensor itself. The first thing that you can check is your injector uh, pulse width. That's this guy right here and this guy right here. It's measured in milliseconds. If there was actually a rich condition at 5200 RPM, you would see a difference, a spike, in the injector milliseconds. It would go up, way up, or if it was lean, it'd go way down. Um, there'd be like a stair step feature, but there's not anything there. And that's a good sign that this is actually a bad O2 sensor because it pretty much remains constant throughout the entire run. The other thing that you can check is your O2 millivolts, which is this guy and this guy. Again, there'll be a drastic stair step effect if indeed there was a rich or lean condition. The same can be said for the wideband. The fact that the wideband right here just all of a sudden goes straight down to 9.8 is a pretty good indicator that the, the sensor itself is actually the problem. Typically a car won't just drop off like that. It'll slowly get leaner or it'll slowly get richer. Um, this is a really great characteristic of there's a bad sensor. So you can use these few little things to help you diagnose whether or not you have a tune issue or a sensor issue, and hopefully it'll save you guys a lot of time. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something from it. Hopefully it'll help save you some time in the future. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email us or call us with the contact information below. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get these Tech Tuesday videos every week. And follow us on all our social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.